Well, just as the nanny state readies for banning all things hot, comes a chilling report on climate change suggesting we are heading into a mini ice age. The National Solar Observatory and the Air Force Research Lab confirm that three different analyses of the sun's behavior indicate that a period of unusually low solar activity may be just about to begin. It's very similar to a so-called little ice age of about 300 years ago. Now, that's no guarantee of a cooling period, but it emphasized how poorly understood all these climate issues really are. According to Frank Hill, associate director of the National Solar Observatory, this is highly unusual and unexpected. So should we be changing our behavior at a cost of hundreds of billions of dollars for something so unpredictable? For more on the implications of all this, we welcome Competitive Enterprise Institute senior fellow Chris Horner. So, Chris, how reliable are these reports that we may be going into a mini ice age? These seem pretty compelling, and you have to remember that since at least 2008, this National Solar Observatory, their scientists have published papers saying that by 2015, we'd have such a minimum, a decades-long minimum, which hasn't been seen since that maunder minimum you talked about when the crops failed, babies died, so they burned the witch next door because they knew her lifestyle <laughs> did it. Only recently, as this doomsday cult started burning uh, SUVs, it's just sure that they caused the mild warming that ended 10 years ago. So uh, it, there is no guarantee. There is no one factor that drives climate. Man is the, probably the slightest. The sun is one of the biggest, so it's a big deal. Well, you know, you, you were talking about things that just, but the reality is that in six months, I'm going to have to throw away all my incandescent bulbs, or at least I'm not going to be able to go out and buy anymore, which is why I'm hoarding them like crazy now. And there are hundreds, thousands of other things that are going to affect our behavior as a result of predictions that are incorrect. Uh, that's true. Now, think about this. Coolings, historically, you listen to the news during the winter, during storms. Cooling periods and winter, severe winters, drain local and federal budgets. They just do. They slow economic activity. The, the Obama administration blamed winter when things slowed down occasionally. Uh, politicians always do that. We need to remember that. Warmings have always been beneficial. Coolings have always been deadly. And they also are a drag on the economy. Now we've got these institutions put in place, these cap-and-trade schemes regionally. They're still trying through EPA nationally. Uh, Europe's done it. Uh, their wealth transfer First, their drags in the economy, their energy yeah. rationing schemes, they're bad. During the cooling period, you're talking about a double, triple whammy. Well, we, we, we did have the end of the Chicago Climate Exchange. That was the one that Al Gore's buddy, Al Gore and his buddies were, were putting together. That seemed to die out about six months ago. Uh, is this a final nail in that coffin? Should be. This thing does keep, uh, to extend the analogy, keep rising from a cask of its native soil, it seems. So it's hard to kill this one dead, but it could be that stake. Let's be stakeholders of this process and put it to death. But remember, you've got states who are still doing this. California is looking for someone to go down the drain with them. The Northeast has this thing called Reggie that at least New Jersey just pulled out of. New right. Hampshire just chickened out of pulling out of. Europe's got their wealth transfer, and the politicians don't know how to undo it once they create the constituencies that these things feed. Well, so you've Europe, got, we got to stop what's coming down first. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Europe. And, of course, uh, very often the Obama administration lets, loves to copy what they do. Uh, they still have these carbon markets, but they have these scandals related to them. Millions of dollars or millions of euros, however they want to count it, are involved in these scandals because it's so easy to rip people off when you're trading something that doesn't exist, like a carbon credit. Yeah, I, I wonder if your viewers will, be, viewers will be amazed if I tell them that Enron invented carbon cap and trade. And I know because I was in the room. It's trying to make money off of doing nothing. It's, it's, oh, uh, by the way, Peter another thing, not only was Enron involved in the invention, so was Franklin Raines, the former CEO of Fannie Mae. So, I mean, you got all kinds of uh, folks used to ripping off the world involved in these things. Yeah, and it's money for nothing. It's why, as you and I have discussed, the, the mob has taken over the wind syndicates in Europe because it turns out the mob likes free money not based on performance as much as the government does and their rent-seeking buddies. So these are all inefficiencies. They all slow down the economy. Yes, you'll pay, you'll pay Paul a little bit with what you robbed Peter, but it's a net economic drain. The green jobs, the cap and trade, all of this. And if this happens during something that is going to cause, for example, bread baskets to the world, yeah. Canada and hopefully Russia, they will then slow down their ag production too. This could, these policies must be stopped, the new ones, and the things in place must be rolled back if, in fact, we don't have a guarantee, if, in fact, this cooling, as has been predicted for years, does come to, to the fore. Yeah, I, I love the fact that the mobsters are so closely united with these carbon credit folks. And the other thing, by the way, one thing that may... Uh, benefit from all this are baby seals and camels because there was this whole movement to kill the camels in order to, to save the planet because they, they emit so much methane. Right, but remember something. Climate changes, animals like people adapt. Cooling has always been very deadly. 
and warming has been yeah. beneficial. So this is serious business. The other thing was manufactured to set up schemes. This is serious business. Good to see you, Chris. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay warm. Thank you very much. Chris Thanks. Horner. You too.